Okay, so getting finishing up our review exercises, we're solving systems by substitution, and then we're gonna go on and we're gonna do solving systems by elimination. I'm gonna write up all these problems on line paper just because it takes a lot of room. Um, number, I already shared out the answers in class. Let me put those there because that actually gives you an idea which problems do you need to work out. I'm gonna do this four through 10 now. But I shared out the answers. If you need to, if you're watching this video, just pause it, check your answers, and then you can figure out where you need to where you need to use it and whatnot. You know what, when you go over there, turn the lights out if you would, please. In number four, we're in a substitution situation. Y can be replaced with this 5x plus 7. So I'm going to go and say 3x plus. Instead of Y, I'm putting 5x plus 7 equals negative 9. And then, thank you, 8x plus 7 equals negative 9. When I subtract 7 from both sides, 8x is equal to negative 16. When I divide by 8, x is equal to negative 2. Now, some lost soul watching this because they want to see somebody practice systems is going, man, she's working that out fast. But the fact of the matter is, is that you guys have done this already in my class. And so the object of the game is we are just checking to make sure we're ready for our test. I'm going to plug this x of negative 2 back in. I'm going to use this second equation. I need to figure out what y is. So 5 times negative 2 plus 7 is going to give me y is negative 10 plus 7. y is negative 3. And again, I had shared this, but let's come down and say that the solution to this system is that ordered pair, negative 2, negative 3. Make sure that you're showing me what that ordered pair is finally. Now in 5, maybe I'll do this again. In 5, again, the answer should be 2 and 1. The system in 5 is x plus 4y equals 6 and x minus y equals 1. Now, there's lots of ways that you could solve this one um, but in substitution. But I actually think the easiest thing for me to do is take this equation right here, this x minus y equals 1, and I'm just going to add y to both sides. Then I'm going to put it as an x equals 1 plus y. So then I can go and take and put this one plus y in place of the x in the first equation. And so in doing that, I'm gonna wind up with one plus y plus four y. I just lost my pencil. One plus y plus four y equals six. So that's gonna be one plus five y's equals six take one away from both sides, five y's equals five. When I divide both sides by five, y is gonna be one. Now I'm gonna go use that. I don't know, let me use this equation. X minus one equals one. Well, if I add one to both sides, X must be my solution here we had to get at was two and one. Just make sure that you're stating what that solution is. I totally had a better pencil and I lost it. How does that happen? There it is. All right, good deal. Now, moving on to question six. Um, question six, we've got 2x plus 3y equals 4, and then y plus 3x equals 6. I like this second equation. If I take three x's away from both sides, it's a y equals negative three x plus six. That'd be easy to graph from there. It's in that mx plus b form. Now I'm gonna go, and where I see y in this first equation, I'm gonna put in this negative three x plus six. So coming over here, two x plus three times negative three x plus six equals four. Substituted what I have y equal to into the whole equation. A lot going on in here. I've got to distribute 2x plus, I'm not going to put plus. This is going to be minus 9x. Three times negative 3x is going to be minus 9x. Three times six is going to be plus 18. That's all equal to four. Two x's minus nine x's is going to leave me with negative seven x plus 18 is equal to four. I'm gonna take 18 away from both sides. Negative seven X equals four minus 18 is negative 14. 
divide both sides by negative 7, x is equal to 2. Now, we know x is equal to 2. Let's go use it. Uh, how about this one right here? y plus 3 times 2 equals 6. six. y plus 6 equals 6. y is going to have to be 0. Solution to this one. So if I took 6 away from both sides, y would be equal to 0. So in our substitution, now, you do have the choice on your test um, you don't have the choice about graphing. You have to graph to solve a system, but you do have a choice on your test to use substitution or elimination. I'm going to turn my page now and go on to this. Wait, you made two zero? Not oh, I got to do number seven. Oh, wait a minute. Did I write it backwards? Yeah. Oh, good eye. Ha ha. Just seeing if you're paying attention. No, I'm not. Um, two zero. Thank you. Good eye. Anybody watching it, I hope that my kids don't have to go back to it. But All right, now actually number seven, we're still thinking about using substitution, but a lot of people said they just sort of left seven off. Don't let yourself get confused by a word problem. Don't skip stuff just because you have to read in math. Come on, you guys. Don't. You can do this. You can all do this. Um, you spend $20 total on tubes of paint and disposable brushes for an art project. Tubes of paint cost $4 each and paint brushes cost 50 cents each. You purchase twice as many brushes and as tubes of paint. How many brushes of tubes and paint do you purchase? Now, is there any reason why we shouldn't be using T for tubes and B for brushes? Everybody cool with that? T is gonna be the number of tubes of paint. B is going to be the number of brushes. Now, the first thing that we read about was pay 20 bucks for a certain number of tubes of paint and a certain number of brushes. They go and tell us that the tubes of paint are $4. So I got to take $4 times every T for tubes of paint, put that together with how much were the brushes, 50 cents for every brush, and that's going to be equal to $20. Now, that's all fine and good, but I can't solve this until I have another relationship between tubes of paint and brushes. Now, this makes some, this is kind of an interesting one because this is kind of, we did another problem like this in our notes packet, I remember. Something related how much, and then there was the whole idea related how many. How much versus how many? Now, we get a how many description that's kind of, it's a little bit confusing. You purchase twice as many brushes as tubes of paint. How can we express that? You purchase twice as many brushes as tubes of paint. So the number of brushes equals 2T. You got it. We purchase twice as many brushes as we do tubes of paint. So however many tubes of paint we're, we double it, and that's the number of brushes. Now, do you guys see why we're in a substitution situation here? Let's go put 2t in place of the b. If b is 2 times the number of tubes of paint, let's go replace that. So $20 is equal to 4t plus 50 cents times 2t. 20 equals 4t plus... 50 cents times two is just gonna be a dollar. One T. Keep going. Divide everything by five. And that means then we did four tubes of paint. How many brushes? Remember we said brushes were twice as many tubes of paint, eight brushes. Four tubes of paint, two times four tells me eight brushes. And then you can go back in and check it. Is four dollars times four, that's 16, right? Four dollars times four tubes of paint, that was 16 bucks. 50 cents times eight brushes, that's gonna be four dollars. Sixteen dollars and four dollars, there's your 20. So just going back in and checking to make sure that it made sense. And I'm going to go on to the elimination now. You have to. I'm going to leave this sitting here for a second, but I'm going to go on to the elimination. 
with elimination, there's multiple ways to solve stuff. If you know that you've got some answers right in the elimination piece and you start watching me do uh, elimination and it's different than the way you did it, doesn't mean it's wrong. Our elimination answers were two negative eight, negative two five, and four five. And again, if you've got those answers and you watch me do mine a little differently, we still should wind up in the same place. We should still wind up in exactly the same place. So elimination, number eight. Some of the eliminations like eight I think are obvious. They got a little, I think number 10 was the one that there was lots of options. Nine X minus two Y is equals 34. Yeah, I like this one. It sets itself up for elimination quite nicely because we've got the opposite of two Y and positive two Y. And that is equal to negative six. So what I'm noticing is this 2y, negative 2y and positive 2y is gonna turn into zero because I'm gonna add down. Elimination, we talked about it, add down. Nine x's and five x is 14 x's. Negative 2y, 2y, there goes my y's, bye bye 34 minus six, thank you. And when I divide both sides by 14, I find out that x is cool. Now, x is two. I gotta go back and use it. It doesn't matter which equation you use. Five times two plus two y's equals negative six. 10 plus two y's equals negative six. Take 10 away from both sides. Two y equals negative 16. Divide by two, y is negative eight. The solution to this one, as we said, was two negative eight. Now I've got people in different places here and I'll mention again, if somebody's watching this and thinks that girl is going crazy fast. Yeah, I am. Today. I'll put these up for you guys. To, no, actually I'll put them up at the end of the day tomorrow. After fifth hour tomorrow, I'll post these up. Friday after fifth hour, they'll be up. X plus six Y equals 28. I'm going on to number nine. Two X minus three Y equals ne negative 19. Now, lots of ways you could do this. If I'm gonna use elimination, um, I gotta multiply one of these equations by something. And I can honestly, I could sit here and talk about a whole bunch of different ways. I just think what I wanna do is I wanna multiply this bottom equation here, the whole darn thing. If I multiply it by two, my thought is the positive six Y and this would be negative six Y will go away. Yeah. Now there's different ways you can tackle it. There's absolutely different ways you can tackle it. The end answer is negative two and five. If you did it a different way and got negative two and five, you're fine. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm just gonna rewrite my whole system. I'm not changing the top equation. And again, if you did it a different way and got the answer, that's totally possible. This is just gonna help you. Two through here is gonna be minus six Y and that's gonna be negative 38. Okay, and I'm just gonna take a second here. So I just distributed two through that whole second equation. My intent was to get rid of the y's. You could have gotten to the answer in a different fashion. Now I can add down x plus four x is five x. Positive six y, negative six y, bye-bye. 28 minus 38, negative 10. When I divide both sides by five, there's that x equals negative two. If x is negative two, negative two plus six y is equals 28. Add two to both sides, six y equals 30. When I divide both sides by six, y is five. Yep, and it's, I'm glad to hear some people are like, yeah, your method worked even if it was different than mine. That means you're understanding if you can follow this through. There's different ways we could set that one up for sure. Right? Now, number 10. I think I'm gonna flip my paper over for this one. Number 10's answers were four and five. I don't even know if I wanna think about how many possible ways we could do this. And I don't think that in your um, notes packet we had a systems set of two equations like number 10. I don't know if they're always the easy ones, but 
Um, so we're just making a comment. Sometimes in the notes, it seems like they're the easy ones. I don't know. Sometimes in the notes, um, you know, I do such a great job of making it look easy. <laughs> I find myself funny too. Now, is there any way I can multiply this first equation by something and have opposites down here? It's just kind of a mess. Like, you know, what's, how can I get negative 8x or how could I get positive 5y? And when I look at this and realize that there's nothing I can do to get 8x and negative 8x or 6x and, and negative 6x or negative 7y and positive 5y, I start thinking about least common multiples of something. And I don't know why I just am fixated on this 7 and 5. My eyeballs are more attracted to odd numbers for some reason. If I wanted to, let's think about this. If I wanted my y's to be negative 40y, that's not 40, negative 35y and positive 35y. Where am I getting 35 from? Least common multiple of 7 and 5 is 35. So if I want this top one to stay negative, but this needs to be 35, that means this top equation then, I'm gonna multiply this one by five. And again, there's a bunch of ways you could do this one. I'm gonna leave my negative this way. So then my first equation is gonna come down here like this. Five times eight uh, X is gonna be 40 X minus 35 Y's equals negative 15. And I know this is a lot. That's why I'm walking slow through it. Now, let me look at the second equation. The second equation has got 6x minus 5y. Well, I want that minus 5y to be this positive 35y. So I've got to go through this whole equation by negative 7. I don't have a choice about that. I've got to go through the whole equation by negative 7. So then that one's going to come down here. 42, negative 42x. No, it's 6x right here. Negative 7 times positive 6. Negative 42x plus 35y's equals, is that negative 1? Yeah. So it's going to be positive 7 over here. A lot going on. Now we can add down. <laughs> Did you get this one, Johan? Okay, he's looking like that's crazy. Negative 2x equals negative 8. These go bye-bye. X is equal to 4. <laughs> now let's go back up to, boy, both of these are complicated. I'm going to grab the second equation. 6 times x minus 5y equals negative 1. Doesn't matter which one you put the x into, but notice I'm going back into my originals. 24 minus 5y equals negative 1. Take 24 away from both sides. Negative 5y equals negative 25. Divide both sides by negative 5. y is equal to Five. Solution of this one, four comma five. Cool.